Good evening. Uh, wonderful to see such a beautiful crowd here tonight mm -hmm. in celebration of Franco-American friendship. Uh, we have a piece by a French composer Thierry Millet from Toulouse based on The Little Prince and we will play the excerpt that has to do with the planets. Uh, and because this excerpt has to do with the planet, we have a very special guest tonight to narrate it. Uh, Dr. Sian Proctor, who is an astronaut and was aboard SpaceX very recently. And the voice of the little prince uh, will be rendered by uh, Maxime Cara. I am very excited to have this first ever concert of the National Chamber Orchestra, a brand new ensemble made of un members of the Baltimore and National Symphonies, one of the very finest orchestras now in the area. Please enjoy this uh, around 12 minutes excerpt of the little prince. Thank you. For his escape, he took advantage of the migration of a flock of wild birds. On the morning of his departure, he put his planet in perfect order. And when he watered the flower for the first time and prepared to place her under the shelter of the glass globe, he realized he was very close to tears. He found himself in the neighborhood of the asteroids 325, 326, 327, 328, and 329, and 330. He began, therefore, by visiting them in order to add to his knowledge. The first of them was inhabited by a king clad in royal purple and ermine he was seated upon a throne, which was at the same time both simple and majestic. Ah, here is a subject. He did not know how the world is simplified for kings. To them, all men are subjects. Grown-ups are very strange. The second planet was inhabited by a conceited man. Ah, ah, I am about to receive a visit from an admirer. For to conceited men, all other men are admirers.
The grown-ups are certainly very odd. The next planet was inhabited by a tippler. What are you doing there? I am drinking. Why are you drinking? So that I may forget. Forget what? Forget that I am ashamed. Ashamed of what? Ashamed of drinking. The grown-ups are certainly very, very odd. The fourth planet belongs to a businessman. This man was so much occupied that he did not even raise his head at the little prince's arrival. You own the stars? Yes. <clears throat> and what good does it do to you to own the stars? It does me the good of making me rich. And what good does it do to you to be rich? It makes it possible for me to buy more stars. How is it possible for one to own the stars? I myself own a flower, which I water every day. I own three volcanoes, which I clean out every week. It is of some use to my volcanoes, and it is of some use to my flower that I own them. But you are of no use to the stars. are certainly all together extraordinary. The fifth planet was very strange. It was the smallest of all. There was just enough room on it for a street lamp and lamp lighter. It may well be that this man is absurd, but he is not so absurd as the king, the conceited man, the businessman, and the tipper, for at least his work has some meaning. When he lights his street lamp, it is as if he brought one more star to life, or one flower. When he puts out his lamp, he sends the flower or the star to sleep. That is a beautiful occupation, and since it is beautiful, it is truly useful. Thank you. 
Nevertheless, he is the only one of them all who does not seem to me ridiculous. Perhaps that is because he is thinking of something else besides himself. That man is the only one of them all whom I could have made my friend. The sixth planet was ten times larger than the last one. It was inhabited by an old gentleman who wrote voluminous books. What is that big book? What are you doing? I am a geographer. A geographer is a scholar who knows the locations of all the seas, rivers, towns, mountains, and deserts. That is very interesting. Here at last is a man who has a real profession. advise me to visit no the planet earth it has a good reputation so then the seventh planet was earth <laughs> 